Alright, this is my Stanley All Weather 5000 Light Duty Generator. Alright, so this is my Stanley All Weather 5000. It has 5000 watts and a surge up to 6500. Um, I bought this generator because it's the only one that I could find that I could use in the rain and snow and that was very important to me. And the reason it can be r run in the rain and snow is because this wire, the 240 um, volt wire is installed upside down and the rain and snow will actually just um, shear off right off of this plastic and miss the wire. So that doesn't have to be, um, doesn't get wet. Now where you plug in the 120 volt um, is this control panel, but what's nice about this control panel is that you can remove it off of the generator like this. So once this is removed, you have 15 feet of 240 wire. You can run this into your garage, you can run it into your house, wherever um, there's a dry spot. And then you have your 120 volts where you can plug in your normal three prong wires. So to start this thing, the first thing you want to do is go into this control panel and turn the engine knob from off to on. You can actually leave the breaker off for the time being until you're ready to hook it up to some power and some outlets. Come over here, pull on the choke. Let's see, make sure you can see it. Here's the choke, pull the choke on, and then turn on the fuel. And once you turn on the fuel, let it pump for a second, and then you pull it, give it a rip. Like that, it starts right up. Now you can turn off the choke. One of the things that I plan to do in the next few weeks is actually convert this generator into a tri fuel generator. Because I have a, let me actually show you. If you look on the side of my house, I have a huge propane tank, which I believe is like 400 gallons. Um, and I can actually connect this generator to it. So not only can I run gasoline fuel, but I can also run propane. So if the gas stations are down because they have no power, I still have the option of connecting it to propane tanks. So this converter that I'm going to be buying, apparently there's a piece that goes in between the air filter and the carburetor, and then you hook up the propane into that. So I'm going to have to bump out this um, air filter, and what I'm worried about is that air filter is going to be bumping into this pole. And what I've seen other YouTube videos is that they actually have to cut this pole right here to be able to install the air filter. Alright, I'm just going to take one thing at a time. Move the box over to the side. Let's see, are we still in focus? Yeah, it's actually probably much better. I feel like I'm unwrapping like deli meat. All right, what do we have here? All right, so this looks like, from my research, this is actually where the gas gets pumped into the air filter. This gets placed in front of the air filter between the carburetor and the air filter. This gets placed there and then the propane gas is actually sucked through here. It's actually it's connected here and gets sucked through. I'm not quite sure what this is. This is a gasket. 
And these two things are the extension screws that allow you to extend. Oh, this is really long. That allow you to extend through this piece and still be able to connect your air filter to this. From my understanding. So here's a bunch of connections. I'm not quite sure what they are, or what they do, or how you connect them, but I will figure it out. bunch of little screws in here so not quite sure what this is this looks like a mounting plate I'm sure some hoses go in here I believe this gets screwed in here I'm gonna have to buy some pipe uh, tape or actually they from what I heard you don't you use tape you gotta use pipe sealant on here because it's gas and not just water, so. That goes in there. I'm not quite sure what this is for yet. But I will find out. All right, so let's move that along. Take out the next thing. This is a bigger piece. All right. All right, so this is the regulator that will actually take it from a high pressure. It comes out of the propane tank at high pressure, and this will reduce it down to low pressure, which um, the generator will accept. So that's what I know about this so far. This is the primer button. And I have to mount this somehow onto the generator. And this is where the gas comes in. Gas comes out here, low pressure. This is high pressure in, low pressure out. Um, and then this goes into this piece right here. And it gets pumped into the carburetor. All right, so that's what this is. Let's see what else I have in here. Here's a box. All right. So this looks like another regulator. Um, this is for if I wanted to hook this up to um, a propane tank, like just a, a 20 gallon or 20 pound propane tank from say a grill I would need this in addition to this one so I do have this maybe that's why there's extra fittings over here and then last but not least looks like I have two hoses one that has fittings already on there and then one that does not so that's the unboxing of my conversion kit that I just received <laughs>